So what we have here is the DJI RS3 Mini, and this is the newly released Jayoon Crane M3S. So I've been getting a lot of questions on the channel. How do these two gimbals compare? They are very compact, lightweight gimbals that can do the job for you even with some full frame cameras and lenses. So uh, which one do you buy? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, first thing I want to say is this is sponsored by Nobody. These are my gimbals. Nobody asked me to make this video. Nobody ever asks me to make any videos. And the great news is both of these gimbals are absolutely fantastic. You're going to be happy with either one, but you do want to know what you are getting. And if you want to know what you're getting more in depth, I did a review of each of these two gimbals. So that will be linked below in the description. And you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to later on where I do a side-by-side -side comparison. Just me holding the two gimbals with similar sized cameras and lenses and just walking and running and just filming to see if there's any difference between the two when it comes to stabilization. And you know what? There is a little bit of a difference. And speaking of differences, I will say straight off the Jayoon Crane M3S is uh, quite a bit lighter and smaller than the DJI Mini RS3. And uh, you may not be able to see it right here, but this handle is much thicker than uh, the M3S. So the actual numbers are on my scale. Uh, I got 695 grams for uh, the Jayoon Crane M3S without the feet and uh, the RS3 without the feet is 873 grams. So 873 compared to 695, you definitely feel it, you notice it in the grip and uh, the DJI has bigger arms and it's a bit of a heavier gimbal, but that is also an advantage for it when it comes to payload. So while lighter and more compact, this gimbal will actually carry less weight. A lot of people ask me what is the payload capacity, but uh, these gimbals don't really do it like that. The DJI does it a little more. They say it can support up to two kilograms and uh, then they have a list on their website of compatible cameras and lenses. Uh, this one will hold say an a7 IV with a 24 to 70 G Master at 2.8. So that is quite a big setup. This gimbal can basically hold any of my cameras and lenses. So uh, if you don't know what cameras and lenses you're going to be using, this guy is definitely the safer bet. Now, Jayoon, on the other hand, they don't even give you the payload capacity. They just give you a list of cameras and lenses. And if your camera and lens are on that list, then it will work with this gimbal. And it's certainly no slouch in terms of power. It can support, say, an A7 IV and a 24 to 70 F4. Not the F2.8 G Master, but the F4. This certainly does support a lot of weight, especially compared to the old Crane M3. The motors are a bit stronger, so uh, this, this can do the job, but make sure that the camera and lenses you have are on this list. Now, another difference is dedicated vertical video mode. The Crane M3S, it can do a version of vertical video mode. It's called portrait mode, where it just turns the camera straight up into the air, and then you have to hold it in flashlight position. It also has a little uh, quarter inch thread there, so you can hold it down here. Say if I take off these feet, then uh, I can put it this way, and then you can hold it in flashlight mode a lot easier so you can do uh, vertical video mode that way but the uh, DJI RS3 Mini actually gives you vertical video mode in a traditional gimbal like style which is great so you have to slide the plate off here and then you take this bottom plate off as well and then you slide the camera and this plate right here, but then you do have to rebalance. But that is still great for the TikTokers and the booty poppers. Uh, you can have vertical video mode by switching the arms around. Now, uh, Jayun does sell a uh, gimbal that does do that. That's the new Weeble uh, 3S, which I'll be doing a review of soon. They actually have a really elegant solution for this vertical video mode. But we're talking about the smaller, more compact gimbals right now. Now, something the Crane M3S does have that the DJI does not is this little LED light. You can actually uh, change the color temperature and it comes with little gels as well so that you could get a little artsy with your gimbal. And uh, some people may think that's a gimmick. I personally don't. I think that when it starts to get dim and dark out, this is a really nice 
feature to have. Now let's talk a little bit about quick release plates. They both have quick release plates. The Zhiyun right here, it has this uh, V-shaped one cover up my pretty eyes. And now the unfortunate part about this is that it is not Arca Swiss compatible. There is a great solution to that. I will talk about that in a second, but uh, still you can uh, leave that plate on the bottom of your camera and then uh, have everything set up. Just quick release on and off. The uh, old Crane M3, not the S1, it uh, didn't have a way that you could keep your positioning so that you could make quick changes, but uh, this one does have it. Too bad it's not Arca Swiss, but we'll talk about that solution now. Uh, the DJI one, it's similar in that it has a chunky quick release plate right here, but the bonus here is not only is it Arca Swiss, it also has uh, a screw. It, it comes with a couple of screws. I like the one with the wing so that I can actually tighten it. Whereas uh, I forgot to mention on the DJ, or uh, the Crane M3S, get my gimbals mixed up, you need a little coin or a key to fasten it on. I am used to that. Most of my equipment requires that type of thing. So I do have a key or a coin with me at all times. But here comes that solution for the uh, Zhiyun Crane M3S and it's also available for the DJI. And uh, that is Ulanzi. Ulanzi sell these quick release plates here, the F38 system that I love so much. So this whole arm can fit right on to uh, the Crane M3S and you can make your adjustments as per usual. It actually makes the uh, gimbal a little bit lighter. I think it's 20 grams lighter when you add this. And so I swap it in and out. I definitely would recommend if you're going to get either of these two gimbals, go to Ulanzi's website and uh, pick up the quick release plate for the uh, M3S or the DJI. They also have the arm that supports it so you can do this and still go into your vertical video mode. It's all fine. But then instead of just having this regular Arca Swiss plate, you had that F38 quick release plate that's Arca Swiss compatible, but also very great with that F38 system that I never shut up about. I'll put a link to that system here over my left shoulder. The DJI will give you more battery life. It has 10 hours of runtime, whereas the Crane M3S has about 7.5 hours of runtime. And they both feature quick charging USB ports. They have the standard gimbal modes, you know, the pan follow, the pan tilt follow, the lock, the sport mode, the go mode, and also vortex where you do that Alfred Hitchcock spinning. Uh, the, these guys, they share the same types of modes. Now, what's really great about both these gimbals is they have Bluetooth functionality. So your camera, you can set up, you know, uh, the start and stop, and you can do some zooming with certain lenses with the DJI, and you can do some half press to focus with the uh, Crane M3S. So check your camera and uh, with the compatibility of both of these things to see what the Bluetooth functions can do, but they can do at least the start and stop recording for uh, both and uh, that's really great, not just for video, but when you want to do the extra features like time lapses and motion lapses, things like that, they can fire off the shutter button so that uh, it can take say panoramas or night skies with the swirly swirls, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much a tie there. And they both function similarly when you connect a USB-C cord, you can connect the gimbals directly to your camera via USB-C and it does give you some more functionality. Once again, check the list to see what your camera can do with this USB-C, but my Sony's for instance, you can control the uh, shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO, things like that, but uh, you can only assign it to one thing. So say this scroll wheel right here. Now I personally like to have the scroll wheel for my roll axis. So I personally really like it for that. I don't enjoy connecting cables to my cameras, but, uh, and my gimbals, I just find it's extra mess and I like to have the scroll wheel for the roll. But if you're someone who does like that extra functionality, then uh, Bob's your uncle, you got it. That's a big improvement for the M3S because the M3 didn't have a lot of functionality with the cable and it certainly didn't have Bluetooth. Now there is a difference when it comes to those extra features like time lapses and hyperlapses and motion lapses with how you use them. With the DJI, you control all of that through the app. It is a good app and it's nice and slick, but it's too bad that you have to open it up to do it. You can do virtual joystick and panorama, you can do uh, time lapses and you can do some tracking. And it is very easy to use and intuitive, but you do have to go 
through the app. Now, the app for the uh, Zhiyun Crane M3S is not as fully featured. You can control it virtually through a joystick and you can use Force Mobile where you can control the gimbal by moving your phone around. You can also do that with the DJI. Like I said, similar functionality. But a lot of people will consider this a plus for the actual Crane M3S in that you can get to the things like your hyperlapses and your motion lapses and having different points, doing your panoramas, all on the touch screen here. You don't actually have to go into the app. I do wish those features were available in the app. So if you wanted to go through the app, then you know, you might find it easier to do that than on the little touch screen. But it is, I personally prefer being able to do it all from the actual gimbal itself without having to pull out my phone and doing it that way. So now let's get to a big one and how the footage actually comes out when you use these two gimbals. I will show you some side by side. So uh, right here in the first one, I am just walking with the two gimbals in my hand and I'm trying to keep them as steady as I can. Of course, this is not the optimum way to carry a gimbal one-handed walking down the street, but it will give you an idea of how they work compared to each other. And now in this test, I turned it around and looked at my pretty face. And this is me walking in selfie mode. Some people like to use the gimbals for the old selfie. And then I started to run down the street like a lunatic pointing two cameras at my face and see how they do. Now in these tests, I also switched arms just to make sure my left arm or right arm wasn't more steady than the other one. I wanted to give the gimbals a fair test. So I use these two gimbals a lot and they are running the latest firmware versions. And what you saw in those tests is what I have seen consistently when I'm using these gimbals and I do use them a lot and that they're both great. But I will say with smaller gimbals, you are going to get more of that up and down motion on the Y axis. But I do believe the Crane M3S does handle it better than the uh, Ronin RS3 Mini, at least when it comes to walking. These gimbals are very, very good if you want to stay still and move them in and out and do things like that. But if you're just going to be walking down the street, you are going to see a bit of that bobbing up and down, but you're going to see less of it, in my opinion, from all of the tests I have done on the Crane M3S. Now see, I think it's just because it's with these bigger arms here, there's a little tiny bit more play with the camera. So it, uh, it just bobs up and down ever so slightly more and a little bit, you know, on the X axis as well, a little bit left and right, just a tiny bit more. It's hard to notice it at times, but I do feel that when it comes to just the walking straight down the street, then uh, this guy does a little bit better or running for that matter, like a crazy person. And when it comes to price, the Crane M3S comes in at $300 and the DJI comes in at $370. So this guy's a bit cheaper in terms of the base model configuration. Now for $360, which is still cheaper than this guy, you can get a nice little carrying bag that comes with it and also a uh, phone mount holder. But I think the base configuration is fine. So the question becomes, which gimbal do you need if you're doing a lot of vertical video content and you're going to be using bigger and heavier lens setups with your cameras, then the DJI is probably for you. But if you don't think you're gonna shoot a lot of vertical video with a gimbal and your camera and lens combinations are supported by the Crane M3S, you get a cheaper gimbal that is smaller and lighter weight. And in my opinion, performs a little bit better when you're out and about. So I will leave it up to you. You guys let me know down in the comments below which gimbal floats your boat, if either of them. Maybe you want to take a little step up to one of the DJI Ronin RS3s or uh, maybe the Weeble 3S. Let me know what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye bye.